gene regulation, regulation of gene expression. So this is the uh, for the AP biology class. And we distinguish two different cells, the prokaryotes, where the DNA is in the cytoplasm in the nucleid region, and it's circular, and in eukaryotes, when the nu uh, nucleus contains the genetic material and uh, they are linear. In the uh, DNA, there are tons of genes, and transcription and translation of all of the genes would be really time consuming and as well as energy de depending, incre increase the enthalpy of the molecules would require tons of free energy. So how does the cell uh, do which one is going to be expressed which gene and which not? So let's focus on the prokaryotes. First, uh, there's a DNA segment, and on the segment, there are a couple of gene segments right after each other. So these group of genes are responsible, for example, making a certain amino acid, uh, giving, uh, just producing enzymes that facilitate the amino acid making, such as tryptophan. This is important for amino, uh, this is an important amino acid for protein synthesis. Before uh, the genes, it's an operator uh, section, and before that, it's the promoter. Promoter is the place where the RNA polymerase will bind and will do the transcription of the DNA to form messenger RNA. Uh, before that further uh, front, of the gene, there will be a section, we will get back to it a little bit later. So the promoter, the operator, and the group of genes make all three of them together the operon. The operon has a, a special purpose in this case to produce a certain amino acid. If tryptophan is present, if no, not present in the surroundings, the gene will get expressed, pro, uh, enzymes will be produced, and uh, tryptophan will be produced. If tryptophan is present in the surroundings, on the other hand, no gene expression, why to waste uh, energy to make uh, enzymes when the bacteria can pick it up, the uh, tryptophan from the surroundings? Here is a repressor gene with its promoter. The promoter uh, binds the RNA polymerase that it's going to transcribe uh, and translate the repressor protein. The repressor protein by default, oh, actually, so the uh, operon is by default is on position. It's always uh, let the RNA polymerase uh, go through and uh, transcribe the genes. The repressor protein is by default is off, so inactive, until a tryptophan is going to bind to the inactive repressor protein, protein, and it's going to activate the repressor protein. It's going to bind to the operator. So at this point, the RNA polymerase will not be able to transcribe the genes. The uh, tryptophan is acts as a co-repressor. The operon, in this case, it's repressible, inhibited. Uh, it can be inhibited, but it's usually on by default, and it's, uh, this happens usually at anabolic pathways, so at the tryptophan case. Now, that was the repressible operon. Let's focus on the inducible operon that can be stimulated. So, at this point, the default of the operon is off. The example for that is the lac operon that produces an enzyme 
that will break down the lactose that is in the surroundings and the lactose breaks down to glucose galactose and the bacteria can use the glucose for energy source so it also has a promoter section where the RNA polymerase binds also contains an operator section and a couple of gene uh, seg uh, segments after a group of genes before there's a regular before the promoter is the regulatory protein that produces a regulatory gene that produces uh, a regulatory protein that is active by default so it's going to bind to the operator section so it's always going to uh, inhibit the rna polymerase to uh, transcribe the genes if lactose is not present if uh, lactose is not present there's no need of lactase the enzyme to break down the lactose how clever is that but if lactose is present well the so the lactose equals uh, glucose and lactose the, the lactose is going to bind to the repressor and deactivates it inactivates the repressor the repressor gets off this uh, whole complex will get off of the op operator is going to leave it and the rna polymerase will be able to transcribe the enzymes and the enzymes will be able to uh, break down the lactose so this inducible operon is usually present so the lactose is the inducer it's usually present in catabolic pathways now in eukaryotes it's way more complex whatever we just talked about that was the prokaryotes in eukaryotes there are regulatory genes regulatory elements as well as transcription factors all three of them are going to form on the dna a transcription initiation complex and this initiation complex is going to let uh, the gene to be expressed so gene expression will happen so but it's a multi uh, factorial it's not only one so here is the dna and uh, the histones are on the dna forming the chromatin the histones and dna are the unit packages that they form the nucleosome and the histones are acting as dna organizers when it's tightly bound the dna there's no transcription how is that going to happen the tightly bounding uh, part by dna methylation if the DNA is going to have uh, on their nucleotides some methyl groups, they will tightly pack. And the histone acetylation, acetyl group is going to bind to amino acids on the histone and makes them less tight. In this case, it's going to be uh, transcription prone. From the packaging is going to... Uh, go to the epigenetic inheritance that means either the uh, even the genes are the same the phenotype will be different because uh, the genotype is same nucleic acid but the different phenotypes depends on the different uh, gene expressions based on the methylation and acet acetylation of the histone and the methylization of the dna so this is really really interesting part the cancer formation very uh, fast we have uh, in the dna there are two types of genes the proto-oncogenes they promote cell growth in the cell cycle if there's a mutation oncogene will form and this is un uh, going to cause an unregulated growth factor production while the proto-oncogen is controlled growth factor uh, production the other one is tumor repressor gene there are several of them in the 
in the body, they inhibit the growth, they slow down the cell cycle. Example for that is the P53 gene that produces P53 protein. This uh, P53 protein has many uh, functions. For example, it will activate the P21 gene that is going to produce a protein that binds to the cyclin-dependent kinase that promotes cell cycle. If it binds to it, it will halt the cell cycle, and during that halt, the DNA repair process can be finished. So that's why it's really important. So it slows down, the tumor repressor gene slows down the cell cycle, not to let the cell rush through the different uh, checkpoints. The, another effect of the P53 protein is that it's going to, the, going to just activate the miRNA, uh, and also the miRNA is a cell cycle inhibitor. Also, it's going to promote production of DNA repair proteins that they will just make the mistakes. And if the DNA repairing is not going to happen, if it fails, it will activate the suicide genes for apoptosis for the cell. So if mutation happens to the gene, on, uh, uh, in both of the genes that it's going to form the cancer because the cell cycle will speed up uh, or it will not be uh, slowed down. So the pro, I guess that's all.